Hey paddlers, I am Rod Clayton with the Paddle Channel and you may be watching what is our most useful video that we've published to date. By far the most popular topic or the most popular videos that we have are those that talk about transitioning from flat water paddling to ocean paddling or going from beginner surf ski to intermediate surf ski. In this video, I had the opportunity to connect with some of the best coaches I know of to share their tips with you for transitioning from flat water to ocean paddling. If you hang on to the end, I'll share with you a few additional tips that Barry and I have learned that have helped us go from paddling like this in the ocean to pretty much being comfortable in just about any conditions. My name's Andrew Searles. I'm with uh, Southeast Paddle Sports, um, coaching for um, stand up, out rear canoe, surf ski, kayak, any style of paddling. Um, to talk about ocean paddling, um, transitioning from flat water to ocean surf ski paddling. Um, there's a couple of things that I find that are oftentimes challenging for paddlers. So one of them is the balance. Obviously you have the waves coming in um, either any direction. That's an important part of how to deal with ocean paddling. So keeping the hips loose, the hips need to absorb the waves. So your, your spine is never falling towards the waves. It's always going to be directly centered. Your hips are going to absorb the waves, so they're going to be going either direction loosely, so that you can be stable in the boat. Oftentimes, also, I find that um, the shoulders tense up. So in the ocean, um, if your shoulders tense up, you end up using your arms a lot more, and not any but muscles in your body. So. That's generally bad because your, your boat speed actually lowers a bunch. You end up not moving, you can get in trouble in the ocean by tensing up. So ideally, loosening up, get that catch right up the um, pool, release with loose, nice upper body to engage your lats, your core, um, your legs is really important. How do you relax the shoulders? You just relax the shoulders? Or yeah, so a good to thing it? to think about is so having your chest up, sitting up tall with your chest, shoulders down. So that gets you in the position of having a, you want to have a relatively straight spine. So if you're leaning up here, the waves are just going to throw you around. You're not going to have control of your body. So if you sit up tall, you'll have a lot more control of your body in order to have the correct posture in the boat. What I expect for new newer paddlers in the ocean is don't expect to catch this stuff easily. It's really hard stuff. It's hard to learn how to paddle in the ocean. Um, don't go by yourself. Have someone that's experienced teaching you because um, it can, ocean can be dangerous. Um, I expect that even after attending a clinic, um, you're not going to be the best ocean paddler. It takes lots of practice in the ocean to get really good. So just getting those every exposure you can get into rougher water um, is generally good. That helps you overall with your strength, your stability in those rougher conditions, your speed in the rougher conditions. So all those factors add up over time. If I had to give a few tips for someone that's moving from flat water to downwind for the first time, I would say first work on your fitness. Make sure that you have the endurance to do short, quick sprints over and over again so that you can feel successful catching waves. And second, I would say, make sure that you have a safe place to learn, whether it's downwinding in a river for the first time so that you have banks on either side to go to if it's not working out for you that day, or whether it's doing out and backs with someone faster than you so you both have a good time in safe conditions. Okay, bulletproof remounts. <laughs> Two words, but if you're venturing into the ocean for the first time or trying your first downwind, you're going to fall in. Make sure that you've got your downwind bulletproof and start that, you know, in protected water, but with wind, chop, boat wash, things like that. I mean, literally, if you're paddling on a lake and you see a big boat wash coming, get off your boat and try and climb back on while the boat wash is rolling through you. Do things like that to make sure you're bulletproof because safety is obviously a paramount concern and it's not just you it's the friends it's people that might have to come and rescue you so that's that's critical the next thing though is the v8 double <laughs> i'm not being specific here uh, and not just saying a tandem but the v8 double fantastic boat super stable great for beginners and if you've got someone that knows what they're doing can put you in a double with them it's going to just make your learning experience much more fun, less scary, and literally 
this learning curve is going to be so much steeper because you've got someone in the same boat as you telling you when to accelerate, showing you when to go, how to go, what to, what to be looking for. So best thing you can possibly do is get in a tandem with someone that knows what they're doing. Next best is to get in a solo boat next to someone that's going to look after you, uh, help you through it, discuss it with you. Um, but yeah, that bulletproof remount is an important thing too. So those are my two top tips. Hey, everybody. My name is Robert Norman. I run the K2N Online Paddle School.com as well as K2N Online Paddle School YouTube. Uh, you can check us out for um, tips and, you know, weekly updates there. So the topic this week is transitioning from flat water paddling into ocean paddling. Being a paddler that is geographically away from swells and waves, you really have to get creative with making sure that your flat water training translates to ocean success. One of the main things that you can do is challenge yourself in the environment that you do have. A lot of times when it's really windy or the conditions do arise, paddlers will dodge those days. And those are some of the days that will prepare you as you make that transition into the ocean. Staying relaxed is the primary thing. If you flex your butt cheeks and squeeze your abs and squeeze every muscle in your body, the ocean will knock you around. Being very loose is a learned skill, but it starts mentally, knowing that you want to try and stay loose and relax in environments that are challenging to you wherever you live at. Those are the foundational blocks that you're building on to tackle the ocean. So once you get into really hairy conditions, your heart rate isn't going up and you're not nervous, this is the, uh, the first few steps in that direction. All right. Thank you, Rod. It's awesome to be here. Um, and thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to chatting and discussing a little bit about my side. Um, obviously, come from a, a rowing background to start with. I don't think it gets any more flat water than that. And then quite quickly progressed into, I suppose, a bit of sprint canoeing and then canoe marathon. And then I think like many people, once I tasted the ocean, I was like addicted. Um, and then flat water just seemed silly. So I think I can relate to a lot of the listeners where you're coming from a flat water background, but it's quite a rocky transition into surf, surf ski paddling, especially just with like this endless moving variable of the water and the wind and the waves. And, um, and I did the fatal error that so many people do and that I'm sure so many other coaches have spoken about. And that is I let my ego get ahead of me and tried to jump into the speedy racy boat and was quickly and very frequently served humble pie. Um, so yeah, I just think it's a no-brainer. Like, get into a stable boat. Um, try not be misled by, oh, but I'm a really good flat water paddler, so therefore I must take an elite surf ski because it's not the same um, as people will quickly find out. And there's actually a brilliant article floating around at the moment that really unpacks like every feature you could consider from paddler to boat to weight to wind to ocean currents, swell, um, and so much of it leads straight back to stability. Um, and the thing is, if you're stable, then you can take any stroke. Then you're not nervous if you're plummeting down the face of a wave. You're not nervous if you're bashing into a wave because you're not worried about falling out, which seems to be people's number one worry. Or second in line is actually getting back in. People aren't that scared of falling out. They're worried about whether they can get back in. And it's like, it's this weird um, exponential curve that like the deeper you are, apparently the harder it is to get back in your ski. There's this like unnerving fear of what's below you. Whereas if you fall out on backline, you're like, oh, I'll get back in. But if you fall out three and a half k's out to sea, you are convinced Jaws is currently being formed and you will be eaten alive. So um, go in the stable ski, have a jaw, get good, learn how to be a downwind paddler in a stable ski, and then just imagine what the world will open up to you when you move into a foster ski. Um, so yeah, that's my bit of advice. Here are a few tips that Barry and I have learned that have helped us become much more comfortable on the ocean and allow us to go out and enjoy paddling the surf ski in all types of conditions. Number one, get your foot plate adjustment right. We found that even being a millimeter or two off in our foot plate length really affects our stability quite a bit. Now, what's the right length for you? I don't know, you're just gonna have to play with it. But if your boat feels very unstable, consider playing around with the foot plate, uh, foot plate a little bit, adjust it in, adjust it out. In the Kaiba'a skis, we've got infinitely adjustable foot plates. And so we can play around, we can put it a millimeter here or a millimeter there. And we found that to be really helpful. If you have another boat that maybe has uh, 
pegs or pins for adjusting your foot plate and you find that uh, it feels a little bit short or a little bit long, you may consider putting a, a foot pad or a, like a surf pad or a foot pedal pad. Another thing you may find really helpful, which we found helpful, is you want your foot strap to be snug. Now you don't need to turn your toes blue. It doesn't have to be that tight. You want to be able to get your feet out if you were to turn over for, for any reason. But a nice snug foot strap, it, it really connects you to the boat and it allows you to become part of the boat rather than just sitting on top of the boat. And so as the water moves around, it's almost like you're just, uh, you move with the ocean rather than trying to balance on top of it. And last, or maybe the two things are, are learn how to paddle a wing paddle, if that's what you're paddling with. Don't pull it back, or paddle through rotation, and that's a whole nother series of videos in itself. But something that you can start, and that takes a lot of time to master, but something you can stop doing today that will help your stability on the ocean is paddling back too far. So try to get that paddle out early. And this is something to play with on flat water for sure. Experiment with pulling that paddle out six to 12, 10 inches further forward sooner than you think you need to. So go ahead and let that paddle flip out of the water uh, sooner than you think you need to. Because once you let that paddle travel back too far, you actually start pulling yourself over to the side. And we found that that really getting the paddle out nice and soon, getting it out nice and quick, really makes a difference in our stability on the ocean. Oh yeah, so one more tip, if you can hear me over the, over the birds singing behind me here, is go ahead and fall out of your ski. Uh, when you first start out, if you get out in the water uh, and you're transitioning a little bit rougher water, just go ahead and launch yourself out of the ski, fall out, remount. Once you get wet, you find that you're gonna be much more comfortable uh, in the water and more relaxed. And that's one of the keys is to be relaxed in your surf ski as you're paddling on rougher water. So go ahead and roll out, get that out of the way, and then afterwards you remount, you're already wet, doesn't matter if you fall in again, and just approach your rough water paddling like it doesn't matter if you fall in. And that'll make rough water paddling a lot easier for you. I hope you found these helpful. If you did, be sure to like and be sure to subscribe. By the way, when I was down in Fort Pierce racing in March, to everybody who came up and said the paddle channel was helpful and helped them in their journey, thank you so much. That means the world to us to hear that and makes it all worth it publishing these videos and putting the time, putting the time in to put them together for you. So I hope you find this one helpful and I hope we'll see you on the water.